To answer this question, I'm stepping back in time. Because before E numbers, ordinary salt used to be the most popular meat preservative. And understanding how salt works is the key to understanding how we still keep meat fresh today. Whoa! Here we go. Okay, so how do we get them out? It's got a lumpy. So, Ow. get it centre. So, oh you can balance the weight slightly. <laughs> so, in ancient times, if you, if you wanted to eat meat, you'd probably have to kill the family pig, and, and either you'd have to eat the whole thing in one go, or it would go to waste. Well, the other solution is to find a way of preserving it. Now, your housewife in ancient Greece probably wouldn't have hoiked a dead pig over her best carpet. But then she wasn't living in a terrace property in North London. Come back a little bit. Yeah. Sit. Okay, oh. there we go. Ah, oh, he looks good, doesn't he? Yeah. So, Ray, what we want to do is we want to butcher the pig, yep. cut him in half, yep. and then salt one half yep. to see what happens uh, to it after you've salted it. But yep. to leave one half unsalted, so, unpreserved, yeah. yep. to find out what would happen yep. um, if we just left meat in its natural state. Yep. Salt, or sodium chloride, was the most commonly available meat preservative before the dawn of E-numbers, because it could easily be extracted from seawater or mined straight from the ground. But before I can apply it to my pork, it's time to give it the chop. There you go, perfect. You'd be taking my job. That's right. That's it. That's it. You're going down. That's it. Three. One half of the pig will simply be left hanging in the garden shed for ten days. There we go, it's on. So, Ray, what I've done is I've insulated this and I'm going to put a little heater in here to keep yep. this at, at sort of room temperature, around 21 degrees, yep. just to see what happens, what sort of bacteria grow on, um. on pork if you don't preserve it. Don't tell my wife that. No. Just, just say, no, no, we're not making some nice ham so, in, the, yeah. in the shed. The other half gets history's favourite preservative, good old-fashioned salt. First, we prick the skin for maximum absorption. Who are you thinking of when you're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> the next stage is to cover it completely with salt and leave it for 24 hours. Excellent. It seems to be a bit firmer. It seems to have dried out. A little bit. The, the salt is damp, so it's drawn moisture out of the, the flesh, I guess. The salted half of the pig goes into an identical insulated and heated shed for ten days. There we go. I've often been asked why we're a two-shed family. Finally, I've got an answer. Ten days later, and Simon Park, a molecular biologist from the University of Surrey, agrees to find out if any of my pinky is still perky, or if both halves of the pig are well beyond their best before dates. We start with the unsalted pig. I'm a little apprehensive because I can smell some signs of decay already, but... So let's have a little look. Oh! Oh, God. <coughs> that is particularly unpleasant, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The problem with that kind of smell is that it's early in mankind's history is that um, we associated that with food that would make you poorly. So that kind of putrid smell is very hardwired into the brain. So the moment you smell it, you get the urge to gag and to vomit to stop you eating it. Oh, God. But it's not the smell we're interested in, it's the bacteria. And we should be able to spot them using ultraviolet light. I don't know why, but the idea of being in the dark with this thing is, is extra terrifying. Mm -hmm. With the door closed. Yeah. Pull that shut. Well, yes, yeah, so you can see um, at the carcass there, where the um, UV light is hitting it, you're getting um, fluorescence in a lot of places on there. So that's consistent with the, the growth of a bacterium called Pseudomonas. So it's a very common organism on meat that leads to spoilage, and it um, produces a fluorescent pigment. So that sort of reveals that the growth of the bacteria is really quite substantial on there. It looks like a piece of Damien Hirst art, doesn't it? And I get the seriously gross job of collecting some samples for Simon to analyse. Oh, it's all falling apart in my fingers. OK, there we go. OK, you done? OK, that's enough. Please, enough. can I get out now? Yep, let's get some fresh air. Oh. Fresh air. <laughs> but how will the salted version compare? 
Oh, wow. That... Oh, it's practically mm. fresh air. Mm. Looks a lot more wholesome, doesn't it? It does actually, it mm. does smell. Like cured ham, like a palm mm -hmm. ham. It's certainly a lot less um, putrefied than the other one. This meat looks fine, and the fluorescent light has shown very little trace of bacteria. But to confirm exactly how much bacteria is on each half of the pig, Simon's taking the samples to be analysed in his lab. So how does common kitchen salt stop bacteria spreading on meat? Bacteria are organisms which have semi-permeable membranes as their external cell walls, through which water can enter and leave. Like all living things, bacteria need water to survive. But when salt is used as a preservative, it draws the water out of the bacteria, which usually kills it. This is a process known as osmosis, and it'll work with solutions that are salty or even sugary. Imagine that this egg is the bacteria. Now, it looks a bit funny because I've left it in vinegar to dissolve away the shell, which leaves a porous membrane through which water can move. So that's the happy, normal bacteria, all nice, round and plump. Now, take a look at this. This is the same kind of egg, but this one has been left in maple syrup overnight. And what's happened is that the water has been drawn out of the egg and into the maple syrup, and it leaves behind a much drier egg. And look at that, that's all crinkly and sad and a little bit dry. And that's pretty much what happens to the bacteria in meat when salt is added. The salt draws away moisture from the bacteria. This leaves the bacteria dehydrated, which stops it from growing and can even kill it. A few weeks later, Simon's analysed both halves of our pig and brings me the results. Hey, Simon, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, looking. How are you? You're back with the germs. Uh, yep. Come in. It's a festival of germs. When you analysed the samples, what did you find? With the unsalted samples, this equates to about 610 million bacteria in the sample that you gave me. And in the salted samples, there were just 68,000 bacteria in the sample that you gave me, so a lot less. Wow, that is a vast difference, isn't it? It's about 9,000, 10,000 fold of difference. 10,000 times more bacteria on yeah. the unsalted pig. On the unsalted pig, yeah. What, what did you think about that? I was shocked, really. I mean, I, I, I know salting is used as a preservation procedure, but I didn't realise it would be that simple technique would be so effective. So I was quite, quite amazed, really. Big That's difference. a real shock, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you.